It was Monday Night Raw last night from the Legacy Arena at the Birmingham Jefferson Convention Complex in Birmingham, Alabama. And I believe most of the crowd was watching the TCU Georgia game. Now, that's going to be very interesting when it comes to ratings tomorrow because that was a blowout. Now, we know the game, even with being a blowout, is going to do massive, gigantic numbers. It was on ABC, it was on ESPN. ESPN2, ESPN Plus, the SEC Network, if there was an ESPN, they were showing some sort of feed of the game that differed from the other one. But, uh, yeah, it was 38-7, I believe, at halftime, and that's about when I fell asleep. I think the final was 65-7, to 62-7. to Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Georgia completely smoked them. So will WWE benefit from that? Will their third quarter benefit and maybe not see the type of drop that we usually see week after week? We'll find out tomorrow, uh, or at least later on today, usually about uh, the time the show ends, around 4 o'clock, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. We'll have those numbers. I'm not sure if the uh, gauntlet match will, will really help that, but we'll, we'll take it from the top. Kevin Owens defeated Baron Corbin in about... Eight and a half minutes after a stunner, before the match, Owens came down to cut a promo on the bloodline, but then JBL came out, and that was just to warm up everybody for Baron Corbin to come out, and eventually he and Owens agreed on a match. After Owens won, the Usos and Solo Sokoa came out, tried to take him out, but with the help of a chair, he chased all of them off. After a commercial, the bloodline was trying to leave. Adam Pearce confronted them. Pierce told the Usos they could get out, but a match was made later for Solo Sokoa and Dolph Ziggler. We then saw a video of the Alexa Bliss-Bianca Belair feud. And when they throw it back to the announcer's desk, Alexa is standing on top of it. And she calls herself the face of evil and doesn't feel bad about what she's done to Bianca because she finally feels alive again. The moth deal went off as she was talking. So then, of course, she was in a trance. A playground was shown in black and white on the screen as the moth would, would cut in and out. And then finally, after some spooky sounds played, all the plumes of smoke started. And we got the weird lighting on the stage and out came Uncle Howdy. And then every once in a while, they would cut to Alexa and she was standing there. And she wasn't happy. She actually almost seemed to be upset to see Uncle Howdy out there with her, with her face all kind of crushed up. And Howdy would just would laugh and kind of rock back. And then they cut to Alexa, where she would look at him very angry. And then they cut back, and there he was, just laughing, standing at the top of the stage. Then they went to commercial, and that was that. And then we got Bailey and Meechin, Mia Yim. Before the match, Bailey grabbed a mic and cut a promo on Becky Lynch. And that was pretty much the story of this match. It, it lasted eight minutes, and it was solid, but unspectacular it was more of a background so the announcers could concentrate on the Be bailey and becky match that'll be coming up bailey won with a backslide and her feet on the ropes candace Lorray cut a promo said johnny gargano was resting at home with an ac sprain said he was bummed he couldn't be in tag team turmoil and she starts talking about the royal rumble when rhea ripley walked in with dominic mysterio and they decided to have a match later on not dominic mysterio and candace but candace and, and rhea ripley then, to begin Hour 2, Austin Theory and Seth Rollins had a face-to-face -face microphone battle. Rollins came out on crutches, but threw one of them away as he did his little Seth shuffle to the ring. Theory says he knows he hurt Seth last week, but he's the pinnacle of the entire industry. Hmm. Says he'll win the Royal Rumble and then go on to headline WrestleMania. Seth admitted that his knee was banged up, but he would be the one winning the Royal Rumble and headline mania before he asked the fans to sing his song. And then they did. And he kind of skipped off. And as he did, Bobby Lashley came out past Seth, got into the ring. Theory tried to get him to, to stop. And of course he didn't. He speared Theory, threw him over the top rope, and then said that his suspension is over, which now, of course, means he is going to be the one to win the Royal Rumble. Long story short, it was a 10-minute commercial for the Royal Rumble between those three guys. Rhea Ripley then defeated Candice LeRae in about four minutes with the Riptide. 
Byron Saxton was backstage. He tried to talk to Bobby Lashley, but MVP interrupted them, said that Bobby should thank him for getting him reinstated on Raw. P asks him to join the Hurt Business again. Without Omos, he, he has disappeared for the time being. Lashley refuses for now, but the way the thing played itself out, they did leave the door wide open for them to return to this. A Cody Rhodes video package then played uh, about his recovery from the torn pec. They showed highlights from the match against Seth Rollins at Hell in a Cell. When he says he hit the springboard cutter on Rollins, he almost vomited uh, because of the pain. Says he hasn't watched the match back and doesn't think that he ever will, but he's on the road back. And everything ends right before he starts training again. So it'll be Cody back in the ring next week on Raw, surely when they show uh, the next episode in, in Roads to, Ro to the Royal Rumble, I guess. Roads to the Royal Rumble, we'll call it. Then Dolph Ziggler was cutting a promo about his match with Solo when Mustafa Ali interrupted and said that Adam Pearce had told him that Dolph refused a spot for the two of them in the tag gauntlet so he could face Solo instead. They talked for a little bit. Mustafa's disappointed. And yeah, this is probably going to lead to one more heel turn for Mustafa Ali as he faces off against Dolph Ziggler. We know the match between them will be really good, as was this match between Dolph and Solo that went about 11 minutes. You know, Sokoa's he's got a long ways to go very early in the game, but he always seems to be in the right spot for everything. Always seems to be, again, he has not brought uh, one match down yet that he's been on the main roster uh, facing off against somebody. Uh, if he's, I think he's been really good every every time out. Ziggler went for the, the fame master, but Solo caught him, threw him up, hit the spike. After the match, the Usos came down, which means they didn't leave the building. And we found that out later on after the gauntlet was over that they have defied Adam Pearce. And I wonder if they're just going to kind of leave that alone like Vince McMahon would, or they're actually going to play on that and possibly play on that, kicking them out of, of SmackDown on Friday or something. We'll, we'll have to see. Damage Control then attacked Mia Yim backstage. Ms. TV with Judgment Day took place. And this was the highlight of the whole show because it was Dominic Mysterio telling his story about being 60 days in or 60 minutes in or whatever it would have been in, in county jail, in the pen. Uh, Ms. asks him, and this is how the third hour ended up kicking off. Miz asks him what, what happened in jail, and Dom says that snitches get stitches, but Damien, Damien Priest and Finn Balor and, and Mommy told him it was okay. You know, he, he can tell his story, so he talks about all the, the hardships and trials that he had to deal with in, in prison, and he ended it by saying now he, he truly knows how Martha Stewart feels. So that was a, a good line there. That kind of worked its way right into the gauntlet match. And Damian Priest and Finn Balor were the representatives for the Judgment Day. They beat the OC. They beat Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin, who did not have MVP with them. And then they faced the Alpha Academy, who are operating as baby faces, which means we got Otis hitting the worm, or I'm sorry, hitting the caterpillar for the first time in a long time. Then he, he caught Finn on a dive when Finn was jumping off the top rope on him, slammed him down, went to the ropes to do the Vader bomb spot. But somehow, and I can't remember how, Balor got a hold of Chad Gable and was holding him on top of him. So when Otis hit the Vader bomb, he landed on both of them. Unfortunately, that means Finn can't go anymore. He can't continue. Priest wants to go it alone. But Adam Pearce says they're going to have to forfeit unless they put Dom in the match. Some good comedy there. Nobody wanted Dom in the match. Eventually, they agree, okay, you're in the match. The Street Profits come out. And this part of it I thought was really good too. But then again, after three hours and everything that had taken place, eh, I was kind of just waiting, wanting the show to be over. But... Priest ended up breaking up a four pin after a 450 splash, which looked like he could be the finish on Dom, and he pulled Montez out of the ring. Priest then charged him, but Ford leapt out of the way, jumped up onto the apron. Priest ran right into the ring steps, and then Dom grabbed Montez Ford, rolled him up with a schoolboy, put his feet on the ropes. Rhea Ripley then held his feet, which were up on the ropes, 
and Dominic Mysterio got the victory for his team, the Judgment Day, the most dangerous man in WWE, Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> so, But did you know that in January, WWE presents the Royal Rumble on the show will be what is being called a pitch black match. Why, you ask? Well, Mountain Dew apparently has a drink called Mountain Dew Pitch Black. And they got a lot of money. If it's all blacked out and nothing happens, we're actually the winners because, you know, we don't have to actually watch it. Jared, put a black thing on the screen here. It's It would be like if the match was like this for 10 minutes, and all you heard was, oh, ow, boom. Oh. No, Mike, stop it. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.